It was another working day on the railway. In Wofford Yard, Cherry and Lizzie were chatting in the sheds. Goodness, I'm tuckered out, and it's not even the end of the day yet. You're lucky to have someone who's helping you out. Huh! Why would I need help from anybody? I can manage myself. In this predicament? Why, yes, of course. Now, if you'll excuse me, a powerful mogul like myself is needed elsewhere. See ya! Hm. Oh, she will knock herself to bits! As Lizzie made her way to the western branch, her thoughts started to distract her. What if that engine is my replacement? Did I do something wrong? Is there something wrong with me? The thoughts kept buzzing in her mind until she arrived at the branch line. She could see Ashton in a siding. Oh, hello there. You must be Lizzie. I'm Ashton. <laughs> if you're going to work here, you better make an effort. Excuse me? You look like the sort of engine that has no experience running trains on a branch line. Well, I could tell you for a fact that I used to run on the Fallmouth branch handling goods and passengers, so I'm capable of running trains on a branch line. We'll see. However, don't make up things to sound impressive. It will never get you anywhere in life. But I... Before an argument could start, the station master came up. Lizzie? Mr. Turner wants you to go to Braxton Yards to pick up a goods train bound for Pentamax. Fine, I will. As Lizzie puffed away, she didn't see two engines in the shed listening to the conversation. Don't mind her attitude, Ashton. I know that there will be a chance for you to show her your capabilities. Uh, indeed. You have a lot more p potential than sh she does. <sighs> I suppose you guys have a point. Come on, mates. I'll need those trucks good for these trucks I brought. We do have a branch line to run, remember? On it, Larry. On it, Larry. As Garrett arrived at Braxton Yard, Lizzie was having trouble controlling the trucks. That's one for you, and you, and you! Hey, no need for that. Whoa, easy there, Lizzie. Calm down. I will show them. I will show them! Lizzie, if I may ask, why are you being rude to Ashton? As I said, we don't need more engines around. We are capable enough on our own. I am only here because Larry and Dean cannot keep up, unlike you, Garrett. Lizzie, you're obviously tired as we are. Deny all you want, but all of us are aging, and at some point, New engines will be acquired. Not true. And that is final. Yeah. If you ask me, Lizzie, you are quite reckless. Meanwhile, Dean and Ashton were double-heading a goods train towards Pintermax Station. This branch line is a p pleasant area to work through, I isn't it, Ashton? Yeah, this branch line reminds me of my home in Falmouth. Just then, Lizzie thundered past them with a line of goods vans whistling loudly. H holy smokes, L Lizzie, S slow down! Y you are on the main line. Lizzie ignored Dean's words as she sped on towards her destination. What's up with her? 
Lizzie doesn't really like the, the new c comers. She thinks we can handle this r railway just fine. Seems a bit hi hypocritical if you ask me. Huh, that's strange. Does she think I'm her replacement? Oh, d don't be silly. Y you aren't replacing anyone. You're just here helping us. I just can't help but think that I'm doing something wrong or that I did something to Lizzie. Tr trust me, Ashton. Y you've done n nothing wrong. Meanwhile, Lizzie was brooding over about what Dean had said. Why does that stuttering duck think I don't know the difference between a branch line and a main line? Is it really that big of a deal to go a little over the speed limit to prove my efficiency to Mr. Turner? At Edwin Shaw Station, there is a sharp curve beyond the platform. Engines must take great care in reducing their speeds to compensate for the tightness of the curve. However, Lizzie was too focused on what she would say to Dean that she wasn't paying attention to where she was going. I swear if he tries to act like he knows more than me when I see him again, I'll- Oh heavens! Lizzie, pay attention! There's a sharp curve coming! Wait, what? Driver brakes! Lizzie braked hard against the train, but the force of the vans sent her bleeding bogey to jump off the track, taking her with it. Oh my gosh! Look out! Get clear! Lizzie shut her eyes as her buffers made contact with the house, making a huge dent in the wall. When Lizzie opened her eyes, her face was covered by a slab of the wall, so she couldn't see anything. Lizzie, are you alright? Yes, but I'm stuck. Alright, stay here. Well, I'll go get help. Oh no, I'll just fly off into space. What else can I do? A while later, Dean and Ashton arrived to see the rescue crew at the scene of the accident. The two engines could see a crane tank engine called Hercules assisting the rescue crew. How bad's the damage, Hercules? Well, thankfully, the only damages we could find are on Lizzie's front buffer beam and the wall of the house she crashed at. Uh, oh my, Lizzie, uh, are you okay? I suppose so. Dean, take the goods. I'll help Hercules clean up the mess. On it, chap. But be back in a few to help. After the mess was cleared, Ashton coupled up to a very weak Lizzie. All right, Hercules, I'll be taking Lizzie to the works now. Very good, Ashton. We don't need more accidents around this line. Yeah, yeah. Grab a arm. Oi, I resent that. As the two arrived at the works, Mr. Turner was there waiting for them. He was frustrated as he looked at the purple mogul. Oh, brother, here we go. Lizzie, I can't believe how much damage you have caused. Now I have to borrow some money from the other railways to pay for this mess. I'm so disappointed, Lizzie. You should have paid attention to what you were doing. As punishment, I would like you to help with the maintenance train around the branch lines. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Mr. Turner started to walk away but stopped briefly. <sighs> also just thought I'd let you know, I'm well aware of what you said to Kale about Cherry replacing him. I do not condone such behavior and hope this behavior of yours doesn't occur again. Mr. Turner then walked away as Lizzie felt very upset. That night, Lizzie sat scared and alone, thinking about her past actions. What have I done? Telling Kale about Jerry replacing him was a good idea. Why did I have to be so manipulative? Now Ashton's sure to replace me. That's what I get for lying to Kale and Jerry. If I didn't manipulate Kale, this wouldn't have happened. I'm not here to replace you, Lizzie. Lizzie looked up to see Ashton chuffing onto the line next to her. What are you doing here? Thought I'd keep company. Look, Lizzie, 
I understand how you feel about replacements. I could safely tell you that I'm not here to replace you. It's all in the past. No, Ashton. It's not. I've messed up big time. Don't worry, Lizzie. You may have done many things in the past that you regret. However, the future is still there for you to make a change of yourself. Don't waste this opportunity. Soon, Ashton drifted off to sleep. Lizzie stayed awake, however, thinking about Ashton's words. And deep down in her boiler, she knew that Ashton was right. The next morning, Lizzie woke up to see Ashton getting ready to leave. Um, Ashton? Do you have a minute? Yes, of course, Lizzie. What is it? I'm sorry for being rude to you ever since we first met. I, I, I thought I was going to get replaced by you, so I felt the need to prove my worth to the railway. Oh, Lizzie, I've already forgiven you for your actions. Like I said, you still have time to change yourself for the better. So, friends? Friends. Both of the new friends smiled at each other. And as the weeks went by, the two engines became closer, and every time they saw each other... Hi, Ashton! Hi, Lizzie! Of course, Lizzie is still prideful and aggressive, but that's the type of engine she is. However, since those days, she has never provided false information ever since.